Rational expressions. A rational expression is defined as an expression that has P over Q, where the P and the Q expressions are both polynomials. So essentially what we're doing is we're building fractions. Now, instead of just with numbers, we can have any sort of polynomial as our numerator and any sort of polynomial as our denominator. What this ends up meaning for us is that a lot of our rules and procedures with fractions are still going to come into play with one extra little twist, and that is the first issue that is mentioned here. Domain. We need to worry about what numbers we are or are not allowed to plug in into our expressions. And so far we haven't found that to be an issue until now. Based on a little factoid that we had about division, we're not allowed to divide by zero. So if there are any numbers that make our denominator into a zero, we would have to throw them away. We're not allowed to plug them in. Which means in our domain, we only include the numbers we're allowed to plug in. We have to throw away the ones that we're not allowed to have, the ones where our denominator would be zero. So we can say very simply, our denominator is not allowed to equal zero. And that gives us an idea of our domain. So for now, very simple sorts of issues like this one, find the domain of x minus one over x plus two. Where is that denominator going to be zero? What number could we plug in for x that would turn that entire denominator expression into a zero? Well, x plus two is not allowed to equal zero, means that x would not allow to be equal to negative two. This is something that we would want to worry about before we do anything else, if we're asked for the domain as well as other things, like reducing or simplifying a rational expression. So before we do any sort of simplifying, before we do any reducing, we would want to find the domain if that was something asked of us. As far as the reducing itself goes, here's where we get into more familiar territory in terms of process. The steps that we have here are the same sorts of steps that you could find if you go back to rules or procedures for how to reduce numerical fractions. So you factor your numerator and your denominator and any factors that appear in both are going to be removed. A factor that appears in both the top and the bottom would simplify to just the number one, therefore that part can be removed. So we can just say we slash out those factors that appear in both the numerator and the denominator. For instance, here in this example, x squared minus 6x minus 7 over x plus 1. With our factoring checklist, we work through factoring that numerator. Using the AC method, we get x minus 7 times x plus 1. That means that there is an x plus 1 factor on the top as well as an x plus 1 factor on the bottom. So according to our step two here, we slash those out. If we're left with nothing else, we at least have a one. So in this particular case, we have a one on the bottom. And as we've seen with numerical fractions, an over one can be removed from our answer. So in this particular case, we would just have the x minus seven that is left as our simplified answer. That little factoid about fractions is also something we can use eventually when necessary with other kinds of problems involving these rational expressions. Anytime that we might need to, we can put in an over one in order to be able to work out things as we need. To do another example here very quickly, x squared plus four x plus four on top, x squared minus x minus six on the bottom, and again, we want to reduce, so we would want to factor both the numerator and the denominator. Using our factoring checklist, the numerator does not have any greatest common factor. So we can begin by saying that we have three terms, therefore we would want to use the AC method, and we would come up with x plus two times x plus two. In the denominator, we would also follow our factoring checklist. 
we do not have a greatest common factor in the denominator, so having three terms, we would use the AC method again, and we would have an X minus three times an X plus two. So here we see, when we start looking, any common factors that appear on both the top and on the bottom, the top has an X plus two, the bottom has an X plus two. So we can slash out one for one, one X plus two on top, one X plus two on the bottom slashed out. That means that we would still have for our answer, X plus two on the top and an X minus three on the bottom. Now that we've actually got something that's a little bit more commonplace to look at for an answer here, a word of warning, do not go slash happy. Remember that that step says that we're allowed to slash out common factors. So we've got to make sure that we keep in mind the difference between a factor and a term. In this answer, the X is a term. The X is a term not factors. Those X's cannot be slashed out. That would be an illegal maneuver here. So make sure that you are careful that you factor the top, you factor the bottom. All you're allowed to slash out are common factors, not terms. So we cannot go any further with our answer in this particular case because there are no other common factors that the numerator and denominator both have. And for a little bit of variety, one last example here of simplifying, where we have things that are a little bit more involved. Looking at our numerator, going through our factoring checklist, we have a common factor of 3x that we can factor out, meaning that we would have left over x squared plus x minus 12. Down in the denominator, we do not see any greatest common factor to worry about, so we can just leave that alone for the moment. And going back to the numerator and the expression inside the parentheses here, there are three terms, so once again, we must use our AC method, and we would have in addition to the 3x out in front already, x minus 4 times an x plus 3. Now that the numerator is completely factored, we can look at the denominator. Three terms, AC method comes into play again. We have, coming from there, x minus 4 times an x plus 2. And we see that there is a common factor of x minus 4 on both the top and the bottom. So we can slash those out, leaving us with a 3x, parentheses, x plus 3 on the top. And on the bottom, we are left with an x plus 2. Again, no more common factors that appear. The top has a factor of 3x. The top has a factor of x plus 3. Neither of those by themselves show up on the bottom as a factor. The bottom only has a single factor of x plus 2. So nothing more that is common as a factor to both the top and the bottom. Nothing more that we can slash out. And this would be our reduced answer here for this particular problem. Again, the main thing that is illustrated here with these examples is that we are essentially doing the same sort of process as we would with numerical fractions, and that's something that you'll see in the other videos about rational expressions.